I don't know. Like I, I've seen. Uh, I, I would have to go back and look. Um, in fact, maybe I'll do that now. How many top decks had bait and switch? Oh, of the vault tours of the, the vault tours, yeah. Uh, but continuing, um. this ends up we have decided to errata bait and switch the following play. If your opponent has more ember than you, steal one. Repeat the preceding effect if your opponent still has more ember than you. Which means it does not trigger the whole card again. Well, there's some people complaining about how it was written. Honestly, following pure logic driven syntax, this is accurate. It will maximum steal two. Two, yeah. We're just so used to implying the rest because the original statement says repeat this card's effect. So you start from the top and go to the bottom again. This says repeat the previous sentence, period. You do that one, you're done. So you it's a steal two at most, and that's all that it is. Like bait and switch in my mind is now. I mean, routine job, since they come in pairs, is automatically better than bait and switch. I would take relentless whispers in a lot of cases over bait and switch, nerve blast. All of those are, in my opinion, now better. Like because if I'm at six, my opponent's at six, those still work. This doesn't. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I mean, that was always true, but it doesn't have that top end. Obviously, there's never going to be a reason to hold bait and switch anymore. I don't know. Like, this was a serious nerf to a good card, which I felt had a really good slot in the game as it existed currently. Um, and I don't even know, like, I mean, I... I don't know where the arguments were coming from to get this done. Obviously, I don't have that insight to FFG. We can ask Brad as far as what was the driving force behind that, I guess, would be the question. This, and this even if you are going to nerf it, casual player too, problem. Yeah, like, I, I don't... I mean, I think you'd be talking about the extremely casual player because like, I don't see this being a big deal for someone that's played more than 20 games. I think for a lot of us... We've come to the realization that bait and switch, yeah, it's a powerful card, but it's less powerful. You know, we can wait and wait and wait Mm -hmm. for it to trigger, but we're chaining ourselves. Yeah. I mean, the more experience you have, the more this is actually going to hurt them. The more, the more, the better your opponent is. They know, like, if bait and switch is a possibility, and, and the more games you play, the easier it is actually to perceive that your opponent has this. Yeah their hand just by like knowing they're playing two all the time um so yeah this this is a a hard hard call for me if they were gonna do this nerf i think they should at least let it steal three still i don't know that was the rumor i kept hearing was oh it's gonna be maxed to three which is Mm -hmm. like yeah okay um and out of all the top level all the power level eight there are six decks of them out there three of them have um, shadows in them, but only two of them have bait and switch. Yeah, so that's that's something to think of. Uh, however, almost all of the, actually all of them have logos. Mm-hmm. So, and a lot of those logos you don't have to look probably will have LA. I mean, either like, a time uh, traveler is or uh, definitely a better card than bait and switch in most scenarios yep. that have a deck that's using it right. So, <clears throat> I don't. know. That was. Hey, what's kind of your final thoughts on it? Because we've seen a lot of people go, I'm quitting the game. I'm out. I'm definitely not quitting the game. I'm not that kind of, like, uh, I'm not a very emotional, reactive person. I understand and can vouch for library access. As I said, the method was a little weird to me. And in the end, the effect's the same. Um, bait and switch kind of shocked me. In the end, I'm on the uneasy slash worried side of what's to come next because in my evaluation of the current meta, as of yesterday, neither of these cards, in my opinion, were actually the strongest cards in the meta. Control the weak right now is yesterday was the best card in the game. And today it is by far are the best card in yeah the i game. mean control the weak screaming <laughs> cave decks right now are, are off the charts yeah like so i mean what's that mean about control the weak i mean i i feel it's some i don't even know how they would edit that or rata i got no idea how they could possibly nerf what it does what it does is so simple maybe uh 
only deny one house, like a restaurant gun test. Like, like I guess that's a possibility. But, but I we think have creatures the, in the new sets that are doing that for us. Yeah, but that, that's just uh, restaurant gun test is still there. Yeah. And the other one is much harder to use than restaurant gun test because it has to live. This is true. Um, so I'm not that worried about that, honestly. But I, I could if this is if not the L.A. thing, we all saw something happening in L.A. Like mm-hmm. not all of us, but like we all had a feeling that L.A. might be addressed at some point in time because we played games. We know this is what happens. It doesn't. I mean, that's the the age we live in. Companies got to do something to address, you know, ill will out there in the community. And that there definitely was ill will towards library access because of the scenario they described. But I don't I mean, if they're nerfing bait and switch because of the power level of the card, which is basically like I read this again while while we were just going through it. They're saying like that really is just this card is strong. We're addressing it. That's that's what this reads to me. Like, there's nothing that comes close to Control the Week, in my opinion, right now. Like, Nature's Call, you can make an argument for that because it is that good. But, like, not close. Not even close to Control the Week. Yeah, I, I, I was surprised get... Bait and Switch had got the eye. I mean, like I said, I know, you know, newer players of the game, Bait and Switch is going to, it's a pain. But then you learn to mm-hmm. play around it. You know what I mean? You keep yeah. And once you play minimum. around it, like that's fine. Like I was describing, like I was saying in my in our my my team chat earlier. I think Control the Week's next. And you know, a couple of people that really love Control the Week are saying no. It's like just go read the description they read here because Control the Week is both of these things, honestly. Because one of the things is a uh, like library access is a negative against how you feel and the fun of the game, and then bait and switch. The argument is basically it's too strong. Control the week is both of these things. The most salty, like I normally take losses fine. Like I've played tons of games. I've obviously lost hundreds of games and I'm fine. I'm going to lose a hundred more, but I'm going to win like 800 more and I'm okay with all of this. But the most salty I personally ever got was in a game where it was because of control the week. And I just felt so awful about that loss because like it was, so the scenario was like, I think it was my third or fourth week playing Keyforge, and I was up two keys five amber to no keys three amber and the guy had like five just creatures on the board he called control the week logos i had a handful of logos he passed back to him he forged he reaped caught played control the week again passed back to me he f- <laughs> went back to him he forged he reaped then i did get to play my logos turn my logo side had no amber control passed back to him he forged a key and won the game and i'm just like like that was awful, and I people mean, lo- when when you lose to control of the week, it almost always feels that way. <laughs> like, and, and what it feels like they're almost trying to do. Like, obviously, we have no interaction with our with our opponent as they play their turn. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it almost feels like they're trying to take the the lockout away. That's what it felt like to me, because because mm-hmm. library access yeah. kind of locks you out. You're not allowed to do anything. And yeah, so so that's my prediction, guys. So. If you have control of the week decks that are awesome, get the wins in now. Get the vault wins now because if this is the reason for bait and switch and this is the reason for library access, I think control of the week, week checks both of these boxes. Mm-hmm. I would in, agree. In, in spades. Yeah. Checks the boxes for sure. Yeah, and, and, and I kind of told a lot of the people today that I was talking to that I said, you know, this is kind of, I believe, a ploy to get people to buy more AOA. And hear me out, guys. I am one. Yes, I did get some AOA early. I'm not going to tell you where I got it from. But I I got a sizable amount of AOA, you know, this Saturday. We have tested AOA pretty pretty consistently. Now, I know it, you know, a lot of people say, that's a small sample size. Mm -hmm. It is. I'll tell you, with the amount I have, it is. It's not a great sample size. But I will tell you that the fact that an AOA deck, and I've tested, we've done all of them, versus a moderate Coda deck. Coda doesn't even break a sweat. Yeah, and no. it was kind of terrifying to me. Realizing there's, all, there's only one type of, there's actually, I've identified two in team, and we well, that was our original plan today was kind of talk about like AOA super decks that might be on the rise to look out for. We we can do that next week and get that out there, but I think this was definitely more important as this is the breaking news of the breaking day. Breaking news. 